Yo, 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 it's your boy J Best. Welcome back to the Straight to the Point podcast, sponsored by. I'm, I'm just playing. I ain't got no sponsor. And I know some of y'all sitting there looking like, he got a sponsor. No, I ain't got no sponsor, okay? I do not. I was just playing. But this is episode 10, y'all. Two full hands. Finally, we are here. And it's all because of God. I want to thank him for just waking me up this morning and allowing me to talk about sports, which is something I love to do. And on top of that, if it wasn't for him, I would not be here right now. Okay, so today's episode, week five is down the drain. Okay, today I'll be talking about my picks. First of all, how I did this week with my um the games that I picked. And then we're talking about referees, man, them zebras. What's going on with referees in the NFL? And then I got two coaches I want to talk about. And then I will talk to y'all about three games from this weekend that I decided to talk about. Normally, I do five games, but because of what I'm doing beforehand, I'm only have time for about three and these three are games that I really want to talk about. So first first and foremost, week five. I went nine and seven. Okay. I went ten and six last week, nine and seven this week. I told y'all I am consistent. I'm not all over the place. I'm sticking to it. So ten and six. I went one game worse this week with nine and seven. Okay. So that's pretty good for me and for my credibility. So now y'all should listen more, knowing that I am consistent. All right. Next. We got these referees, man. What is going on with the zebras, okay? I know all y'all have heard about the controversy with the rough in the pass video. Everything, all these flags they're throwing. And it really happened in two games. The whole Tom Brady and Grady Jarrett and then Chris Jones and Derek Carr. Okay, I'm going to show y'all both plays, of course. But I went and I read the actual rule. So I went to NFL Rulebook and I looked up the rule of roughing the passer. Okay, this is what it says exactly. So for those of y'all that's confused, this is what it says. When tackling a passer who is in a defenseless posture, okay, for example, during or just after throwing the pass. So when a quarterback throws the ball, of course he can't he can't defend himself, right? He can't he can't curl up, he can't defend himself. And then after he throws it, right, his body is open. It's an easy target, so he can't defend himself. So those are defenseless postures, okay? A defensive player must not unnecessarily or violently throw him down or land on top of him with all or most of his weight, okay? So these two plays that happen with Tom Brady and with Derek Carr resembles the rule book, like what it says, what the rule says, okay, with the Tom Brady thing, right? Brady Jarrett did kind of throw him down. Was it violently or unnecessary? I don't think so, okay? I think the whole Tua incident was worse than this. So when Tua got hurt the second time, right, on Thursday Night Football against the Bengals, I think he was thrown down unnecessarily and violently, but they didn't call it. So now referees are looking like, okay, I do not want to be on the referee staff, right, referee group that calls a game and somebody gets hurt like Tua did, and I don't throw a flag. That's what referees are probably thinking right now. So when Tom Brady got thrown down, might not have been to the extent of Tua, but they said, look, he got thrown down a little violently, a little unnecessarily. Okay, let's throw the flag. I think that's what was going through their heads. And honestly, it kind of that play does kind of resemble what the rule says. Okay, I know people are getting mad. So it's football. Get over it. But these rules are in place to protect the faces of franchises. And who are the faces of franchises? Quarterback. Okay, the quarterback position is the most important position in all of football. It's the most popular position in all of football. It's the most popular position in all of sports, right? Looking at basketball, you're looking at um, baseball, you're looking at tennis, looking at any kind of sport, soccer, hockey, any kind of sport. Quarterback is the most important. Quarterback is the most known. Quarterback is the most popular. So these rules are in place to protect them. And the NFL is looking at it like, look, it's all about the money. It's a business, okay? So if Mahomes get hurt, they're going to lose money. Don't nobody want to watch the Chiefs if Mahomes is hurt, right? So you want to see Mahomes play. You want to see Josh Allen play. You want to see Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. You want to see these quarterbacks. So we got to put these rules in place to protect them. And I totally agree with that from a business standpoint. I agree with that from – so even as a football fan, I agree with you protecting my quarterback because I think this whole situation is about being on the wrong end of the stick. Right, for all the Buccaneers fans out there, you are not complaining about that flag. Right, for all the Raiders fans out there, you're not complaining about that flag they threw last night. Right, you're just not. You're just not complaining. But if you're on the other end, if you're a Falcons fan or if you're a Chiefs fan or even if you're just watching football, you will complain about it. But if it's your quarterback, you're not going to complain. So I think it's all about what end of the stick you're on because you're going to fall on one side, whether that's your quarterback or whether it's not your quarterback. So – the second play with Chris Jones, right, 
once again, it meets the criteria for the rule because the rule says when tackling the pa- when tackling a passer who is in a defenseless po- defenseless posture, for example, during or just after throwing a pass, a defensive player must not unnecessarily or violently throw him down or land on top of him with all or most of the defender's weight. There it is, that last part right there. Must not land on top of him with all or most of the defender's weight. So, at first, so first time looking at this play, he did land on top of him with all his weight. That's what it looked like. The first time we all saw this play. But then they went back and they watched the replay. And, of course, Chris Jones stripped the ball. And then he was just falling at that point. He's no longer sacking Derek Carr. When he got that ball, the sack is over with. He, he caused a fumble. He got the ball. He's falling. And then they even show his forearm kind of landed on the ground. To brace his fall, kind of to make sure the weight didn't fall in Derek Carr. Not saying he intentionally did that, but looking at how he fell, he tried to brace his fall. Now, that play, once again, resembles this. You cannot land on him with all your weight. But going back and looking at it a second time, you can tell that it wasn't that. It's, a, it's an easy fix, honestly, NFL. All you got to do is allow us to review those calls. Allow us to to overturn these calls. I believe roughing the passer is not a, is not a flag you can overturn. Holding is not a pad, is not a flag you can overturn. Right? Face mask is not a, a flag you can overturn. If they call it, they call it. It's simple as that. But pass interference, things like that, you can review. So there's certain flags you can review, but there's certain flags that you cannot review. So roughing the passer is a flag you cannot review. And with that being said, I think we need to change that. Allow us to review the flags. Yes, I understand. They don't want us taking four hours to play a game. Uh, because you're going to have referees going back looking at plays all day. But if you want to get it right, you got to get it right. If you, if, if you was able to review that play, it would have went back and saw that it shouldn't have been a rough in the passer. And then on Sunday with Tom Brady, I think that still would have been a rough in the passer only because they think it was violent and unnecessary. But I think all of this is, is just coming from the whole Tua situation. I think that sparked all of this because referees are trying to protect quarterbacks. And when they see what happened to Tua, they don't want that happening to nobody else. So when anything looks close to that rule of roughing the passer, they're going to call it. And I got to respect that, but just fix it. All you got to do is let them review that call. Simple as that. Review it. They probably would have overturned the Raiders one, the Bucks one I'm not sure about. But let, let, let them review it, and it will be just fine. So I have another play that I want to show you all with Kenny Pickett, okay, quarterback for the Steelers. I think this should have been, well, when a quarterback slides, right? So quarterback sliding, that is a way of a quarterback giving himself up and saying, look, I do not want to take this hit, basically what it's saying. Now, the NFL, college football, high school has allowed quarterbacks to do this because, once again, quarterback is the most important position. You don't want to see a quarterback getting hurt. Running backs can't slide. Receivers can't slide. Tight ends can't slide. Nobody else can slide but quarterbacks because quarterback is, once again, the most important position in all of sports. you got to protect the quarterbacks. So when Kenny Pickett ran and slid, right, he's giving himself up. If any quarterback that slides get hit, throw the flag. It's simple as that. It's not even a debate at that point because he aimed his shoulder pads at the ground. When you aim your shoulder pad at the ground, that means you are trying to hit whatever is on the ground. Kenny Pickett was on the ground when he slid and then got hit and then didn't get the flag, right? Didn't get the flag, so our lineman came over, pushed him, whatever, and the whole um, scuffle happened after that. But the flag, you got to call that. Right? And I see that I see that a lot in the NFL. I see when quarterbacks slide and the defenders hit them still. I don't care how soft it is. If you hit me regardless after I slid, throw the flag because when I'm giving myself up the defender knows that so the, the fact that you still trying to hit me makes no sense at that point I think referees gotta call this at any point a quarterback slides and he gets hit call the flag I don't care if you tripped and hit him call the flag because I think that you gotta protect the quarterbacks once again if you're protecting quarterbacks with roughing the passer you gotta protect them with this sliding and getting hit and yes they do call it sometimes right when the quarterback sliding get hit but sometimes they miss it they miss it a lot and i don't like that i think you have to call this this is protecting the quarterbacks and then another play that happened to kenny pickett kenny, kenny pickett really got into it twice because on that same drive he went to throw the ball and this meets the criteria for roughing the passer when tackling a passer who is defenseless who's in a defenseless posture Kenny Pickett is defenseless. He threw this ball down the field. He's defenseless. The defender went and dove at his legs. 
that is dirty. And if you look at how his leg turned on this play, honestly, I think it could it could have been worse than what it was. Of course, nothing happened to him, but you could have ended that man's um, year, his season, right? Mm-hmm. Which is something that nobody wants to see for a quarterback. So, I think you have to call these play call these flags, right? I understand. It's a controversy, but at the same time, let's protect these quarterbacks. Let's throw these flags when necessary, right? And don't necessarily throw them when you don't have to. Once again, the Tom Brady one is definitely a debate, but the Chris Jones one, if you can't review that, you have to call that because it did look like he landed all his weight on um, Derek Carr. So I believe that we just have to roll with it, right? Let's review these plays, and then the controversy will be down the drain before you know it. All right, so now I'm done with the zebras. Okay, I hate I hate zebras. I call referees zebras. I hate them. I'm done with them. The stripes. I'm done with them. All right. Next, two coaches, man. They honestly, one of them, I feel bad for. The other one, he lost my respect. First of all, Matt Rule. Okay, coach for the Carolina Panthers. As y'all all know, he got fired after the game in Week Five. Okay, the Panthers was one and four. Okay, that's not why they fired him. They fired him because of this failure overall. So he got hired three years ago. Got hired in twenty twenty one in twenty twenty. I'm sorry, twenty twenty, went five and eleven. Twenty twenty one went five and twelve, and then this year started out one and four. Now his his, his whole career total is eleven and twenty seven. Okay, so in three years he went eleven and twenty seven. That's unacceptable. But it gets worse when I tell I tell y'all this. He's one and twenty seven. So he won one game and lost twenty seven games. When the opponent scored 17 or more points. That's embarrassing. That means if any team gets 17 or more, you lost. That is crazy. And it's crazy because he's an offensive-minded coach. Right? He calls the offensive plays for the Carolina Panthers. He's offensive-minded. So if you offensive-minded and if team scores 17 or more, you lose. That means you're not scoring 17 or more. See what I'm saying? You can't be offensive-minded coach and be getting outscored every game. That just can't happen. So they did fire him. Me, honestly, I thought they should have fired him after year two. Honestly, you, you should always give a coach one year. Any, any coach, any coach, any level, high school, college, NFL. You got to give a coach one year to get it right. The second year, that's whenever you say, look, you ain't you ain't made no improvement. He went from five and eleven to five and twelve. You ain't made no improvement. I gotta let you go, especially in the NFL, because you're trying to win now. Nobody's worried about 10, 15 years from now. We're all worried about right now. We want to win. Now, y'all heard me um, talk about Nathaniel Hackett from the Broncos, right? That's a whole different situation. I'm looking at decisions he's making in the games that are just head scratching, right? Just mind boggling. These these calls that he's making are terrible. Absolutely terrible. That's why I said that he on the hot seat already. So that's the only coach that I would put in the hot seat in year one. But any other coach, I think you have to give him a full year, okay? Now Steve Wilkes is the interim coach for the Carolina Panthers. And if y'all remember, Steve Wilkes was the coach for the Arizona Cardinals when they got Josh Rosen, right? Then they went 3-13, and and they fired him after one year. After one year, next year I think they hired Cliff Kingsbury from college, and then they got Kyler Murray. So you gave Steve Wilkes one year. I don't agree with that. I think everybody should get more than one year, except for Nathaniel Hackett. After this year, he got to go if the Broncos want to win. But Matt Rule had to leave. And I disagree with the whole firing after week week five. Okay, that's a little excessive in my opinion. I don't think, yes, I, I said he should have been fired before the year started. But if you said we're, we're going to go ahead and go into this year with you, you got to ride it all the way through, in my opinion. You just have to. But some people said that they made this, they, they fired him right now. So that the Dan Quinn, so the, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, or any other nice coordinator, coordinator um, Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator for the Bills, any defensive coordinator is trying to get a head coaching job next year will already have their eyes on the Panthers. It's basically what that's saying. So I see why they did it, but I don't agree with you firing him after week five. I think he should have been gone before this year started, but you decided to go in the season with him. Finish it. Who knows? They could have won a winning streak after week five. I'm not saying they would have because your quarterback is Baker Mayfield. The team not really that good. Defensively, this defensively they're good, but offensively you don't have a quarterback, so they're not that good. But I think that once again, you never know. They could have won a winning streak. Not saying they would have, but they could have. He could have turned the season around. Could have went 500. Could have went above 500. You never know. That's why I wouldn't have fired him. They should have fired him before the season started. But if you're gonna go into the season with him, then keep him. That's how. That's just how I feel. 
And the next coach, man, I had a lot of respect for this coach. I really did. Ron Rivera. I had a lot of respect for him. He coached Cam Newton back in Carolina when they, when they was winning. And he took him to the Super Bowl. He won the Super Bowl, lost to Peyton Manning and the Broncos. Y'all know how that went. Uh, I had a lot of respect for Ron Rivera, man. When the Panthers fired him, I was really mad because I think he was he didn't deserve to be fired. So then he got another job in Washington, so I was cool. But the other day, um, in his, one of his press conferences or whatever, they asked him a question. They said, why are the other NF NFC East teams better than the Commanders right now? So Ron Rivera coached the Commanders. And they asked him, why are the other teams in your division better than you, basically? Because the Giants are 4-1, and one, Cowboys are 4-1, and one, and the Eagles are 5-0. and oh. This man looked at the reporter and said one word. He said, quarterback. That's exactly what he said. He just said that those other three teams have a quarterback. I don't. You can't do that. You just can't. Like, that's just not – that. It's, it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary and it's uncalled for. You cannot do that. Yes, we all know Carson Wentz is not what he once was in Philadelphia. We all know Carson Wentz is not that good right now. We all know he's not good at all right now. But you can't just go up there and say quarterback. Like, that's not fair. Because honestly, I can tell you this. If they had a quarterback, I still don't think they would be that good. So you can't just sit up here and say quarterback. Like, y'all quarterback away from being great. No, y'all a lot of positions, a lot of um, moves away from being great. So don't just say quarterback. Right, you can't do that for for that. So I think you lied because it's more than just a quarterback that's wrong with that organization. Secondly, you you just ruined the rest of the season because Carson Wentz heard that. Right, the whole team heard that. So now the whole team says, "You're right. We don't have a quarterback. Our quarterback sucks." When the whole team is supposed to be behind the quarterback. So I don't agree with what you just said. You just went out there and basically, what you did was you ran Carson Wentz over with a bus. You just ran him over with a bus. Right. Then you put it in reverse and ran over over him again. And then you got out, walked over there to him and said, look, you suck. Then got back in the bus, put the bus back in drive, and then you drove over him. That's basically what you did. Like, that, that is crazy. You cannot come out and just say that, man. I don't I don't agree with that. I had a lot of respect from Ron Rivera, but I lost a lot of respect after he said that. I don't care who your quarterback is. You cannot come out on national media. Everybody going to see this and say, quarterback is why we're losing. I don't like that. I don't agree with that. I don't like it. He lost a lot of respect from me, man. But now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and get straight to the point with these games, all right? First of all, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Cowboys and the Rams first, okay? Cowboys did beat the Rams 22 to 10. All right, how about them? Y'all thought I was going to say it, but I would never say that. I'm not going to do it, okay? Cooper Rush went 10 for 16, 102 yards, okay? Remember that. Highlight that. 10 for 16, 102 yards. Matthew Stafford went 28 of 42, 308 yards, one touchdown, and an interception. Cooper Cup, the one and only. All right, Cooper Cup. Look, Cooper Cup Black. All right, he a brother, okay? He's a brother. He is him, okay? This man is unstoppable. Seven catches, 125 yards, one Touch down. All right. Zeke and Tony Pollard, 30 carries for 164 yards and a touchdown. Now, I'm about to tell, first I'm going to go ahead and say why the Rams lost. Then I'm going to say why the Cowboys won. So let me talk about the Rams first. The Rams right now are in trouble because they can't get any offense outside of Cooper Cup. Once again, Cooper Cup has seven catches, 125 yards and a touchdown. Other than that, they have no offense. Like, this, this it's bad. And the O line is bad. Okay, the old line been getting pressured all year, honestly. And that's why coming to this game, I had my doubts because I said, you know what, the Cowboys are good at getting at the quarterback, and the Rams can't block right now for some reason. So I thought that that was going to happen, but I thought they could overcome it. But apparently you cannot, especially against the Cowboys, whose D-line is legit certified studs. You can't do that. And this Rams offense, so they had 38 rushing yards, okay? It's not good. There's no balance. That means you're strictly passing against a pass rushing defense. That just can't that just don't work. You're going to use one of the best pass defenses in the NFL because of the pass rush. And you're only you're lopsided. You can only throw the ball. That's not going to work. Especially when Cooper Cup's your only target. Like that's just not going to work. The Rams you got to get the run game going. In the past Sean McVay's been Sean McVay is kind of like Kyle Shanahan. They they're known for running the ball. They like to run the ball. But they can also pass it because of the run. Okay, so you, you got to get the run game going. 38 rushing yards. Last week, 
he had 57 rushing yards, okay? Yes, they played the 49ers. They played the 49ers last week, so I'll give them a pass because the 49ers defense is legit. Probably the best defense in the league than the Cowboys. But two weeks ago against the Cardinals, they had 100 rushing yards, but it's the Cardinals, right? So I didn't I didn't judge that game. So, so, so for those of y'all saying that, they can run the ball. Watch this. Three weeks ago against the Falcons, they had 65 rushing yards. This is a team that's normally good at running the ball. And right now, they can only pass. And when you go pass heavy against a pass rushing defense, you're going to get killed all day. That's why Matthew Stafford got sacked and pressured all day. Now, let me tell you about this Cowboys defense, okay? Rams, y'all got to fix the O-line. Simple as that. Y'all got to get a run game going. Let's talk about this Cowboys defense, okay? Cowboys defense, third in the NFL in, in points per game. They only allow 14.4 points per game. That's third in the NFL. They allow 4.7 yards per play. That's fifth in the NFL. They only allow they only allow one rushing touchdown this year. That's tied for first. They have 20 sacks, second in the NFL, and then they have 47 QB hits at first in the NFL. This defensive line, defensive front is legit. The back end, uh, kind of questionable, but this defensive line is great, and that helps the back end out. When a D line is great and gets pressure all over the quarterback, it's gonna help the secondary. All right, this defense. Look, it's, it's Super Bowl winning, right? This is a Super Bowl caliber defense. It is because of their ability to rush the passer. Now, let's get to the quarterback, Cooper Rush. And this is how you know it's strictly defense. So I know they had a strip sack, right? And I believe they scored on that play. They had a strip sack for a touchdown. And then on top of that, they had a block punt. So Cooper Rush, for the most part, had an easy day. Okay, he had a great day. And 10 for 16, that's, 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 that's all he needed to do. What Cooper Cup is doing is he's not losing games, but he's also not winning you games. You see what I'm saying? Cooper Cup, we're not sitting here saying, oh, my God, Cooper Cup is nice. He's not losing games, so he's not throwing. He has thrown zero interceptions this whole year. He's not turned the ball over. He hasn't fumbled one time, but he's also not winning. So we're not saying you won because of Cooper Cup. No, you're winning because of the defense because the team's only averaging 14 points per game. So you're telling Cooper Cup, look, I only need you to score 17. I only need you to score 20 points, and we're going to win every single time. And it's working. And Cooper Cup also doing good because of the run game. I told you all, Zeke and Tony Pollard combined for 30 carries, 164 yards, and a touchdown. That's a great running offense. They're running the ball well. Offensive line, not great, but they're getting enough done to run the ball, right? And then they pass off the run, which is wide open because teams are so worried about the run. So this offense is good enough. Do not start Dak Prescott when he comes back. I'm getting sick of that. Do not do. Please do not put Dak in there because you're gonna ruin something good. When something's moving this smooth and this good, it, people always tell me if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Simple as that. Do not throw Dak back in there Sunday night against the Eagles. Keep Cooper Rush in there and see what happens. All right, because when you get Dak back, Dak can turn the ball over because we know he can't do that. Right, And then when he gets back in there, the offensive coordinator might say, okay, let's stop running this simple offense, which is run the ball and then play action. Let's let Dak do what he does. Right, Let's let Dak do what we paid him to do. Dak is a franchise quarterback, so let's make him look like one. No, that's going to lose you games. Keep doing what you're doing. Run the ball, play action, and have great defense. That's, that's how you're winning right now. That's why the Cowboys are 4-1. and one. It's simple as that. They're running the ball good. So the play action is wide open, which means Cooper Cup is throwing easy passes, and the defense is eating a lot of offenses. That's why they're doing good right now. When I said they was done, I didn't expect this defense to ball like they're balling right now. I just did it. And people saying, well, you know, when Dak, when Dak is fully healthy, throw him in there. Is Cooper Rush better than Dak? Y'all are talking about Dak like Dak is a top 10 quarterback. When he's not, Dak is not, Dak is not good. Okay, once again, who am I to say a quarterback is good or not, right? I only played in high school. But when I'm watching Dak, there's nothing special. Nothing stands out and makes me say, man, I, I pray to God we don't play Dak this week. No, I want to play Dak because Dak is not that good. And people keep saying when Dak comes back, they're going to be great. No, Dak was never that good to begin with. And Dak, last 12 starts, he is 6-6. Six and six. Dak is not that good. I don't know why people keep saying that. So keep Cooper Rush in or you're going to ruin something special, something you got going right now. You're going to ruin it if you throw Dak back in there. I'm telling you that right now. Mark my words. Do not put Dak back in the game. So the Cowboys are now 4-1. and one. Rams, fix the O-line. Get a run game going. Now let's talk about the Ravens and the Bengals, another a must-watch game that I said y'all must watch. 
The Bengals, the Ravens won 19 to 17. This game ticked me off the whole, and I'm going to tell you all why in a minute. Joe Burrow went 24 of 35, 217 yards, and one touchdown, one interception. Lamar Jackson, 19 of 32, 174 yards, touchdown, and interception, 12 rushes, 58 yards. Mark Andrews, 12 catches, 58 yards, one touchdown. Y'all know Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the league, and he's and for some reason, he's wide open for a touchdown. Don't get that. I'm going to get to that in a second. Jamar Chase, seven catches and 50 yards, okay? This game, I'm watching this game, and I'm, I told y'all before this game, I said, look, the, the Ravens' pass defense is terrible. The secondary is terrible. They're 32nd in the NFL. And the Bengals' pass offense is pretty good. It's like top 15, top 10 in the league. Why in the world did Joe Burrow only average four yards per attempt? Why? When you have Jamar Chase, right, yes, T. Higgins got hurt. When you have Jamar Chase, why are you throwing the ball so 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 short? Why are you doing these little dump-offs? Why are you throwing screens to Jamar Chase? Throw the ball down the field. I kept looking at my friend when I was watching the game when I said, bro, why are they not throwing the ball down the field? It's simple as that. Why are you, you – this offense is known to be high power. You have a franchise quarterback. You have three good receivers, right? T. Higgins did get hurt, but you have three good receivers. You have Joe Mixon, okay? This offense is supposed to throw the ball down the field. It's supposed to be electric. This is not an offense where you did. Look, the Steelers, the Steelers offense, I understand right now, right? The quarterback situation is not where we want it to be, right? Kenny Pickett just not getting in the mix of things, right? The run game is, is bad right now. So, we're throwing short passes. I, I can understand that. But for the Bengals, I don't I don't see why they're throwing the ball so short this game. And then the Ravens had three sacks, of course. I told y'all, if the Bengals let up three or more sacks, they probably will lose every game that happens because the O-line is so bad. But the past two weeks, they did pretty good. They only allowed, like, one, two sacks a game the past two weeks. So I thought they had turned it around. But then this week, past weekend, the Ravens got three sacks. But Joe Burrow... You, you may be mad this game because, well, actually, it's Zach Taylor. So, after the game, I listened to um one of the commentators, and they said this offense is so basic. They run slants and because they think that they just have better players than you. So, they're going to let their players outdo you, right, versus they have they don't have true schemes. Nobody's getting open. So, you got to blame Zach Taylor for that, but also blame Joe Burrow. Look, when you go out there and you have Jamar Chase, and this defense is bad in the back end, you got to throw him down the field. I don't think they threw it to Jamar Chase over 10 yards. Right, Joe Burrow only threw one pass that was 20 yards or more. That's not this offense. This offense has to air it out, right? Then that can help Joe Mixon in the run game get going, and that's the way this offense has to go. On the Ravens' side, right, defense did help. Apparently, defense played good, only allowed 19, 17 points, right, from Joe Burrow in the game. And Lamar Jackson, y'all, this is when this is when <laughs> I was laughing during this game because I'm going to show y'all two throws that he threw. And it shows you his that he's still a little inaccurate. Okay. This first throw, he made a beautiful beautiful move. He pumped fake, made the man in front of him jump. And for some reason, they man broke out free. Wide open down the field. He just overthrew it bad. I'm talking bad. It was wide open. It, it, he overthrew it. Then there's, an, there's another play, a post route that they ran. Once again, it was open. And he overthrew it. It's like he just throwing the ball down the field. No touch. Right, no accuracy, and this is what I was talking about with Lamar. Can we make it consistent through the first five, four weeks? People talking about Lamar throwing the ball good. Lamar, let's see him throw a whole year, please. Like, can we please see that? Like, I'm, I'm getting tired of people in four weeks. Trends, man. Trends is one thing I hate about sports. Somebody's doing good for four weeks, all of a sudden they just, they just demand. They demand. No, can I see this for a full season, please? Let me see this for a full season. And apparently, him two missed passes, what could have been touchdowns, are the reason why. They only won this game 19-17. I told y'all, Lamar could not close games. Them passes could have helped them win this game by a lot more than what they did. He's letting teams hang in there, and unfortunately, they got the ball last. So, Justin Tucker kicked that last minute, last second field goal. But let me show y'all something. The, the Bengals made me so mad. You cannot let Lamar Jackson run the ball. As simple as that. Most of his plays are like read options. So he's reading you, right? Make him hand the ball off. I'd rather J.K. Dobbins or whoever, Kenyon Drake, whoever their running back is, I'd rather them run the ball all day versus Lamar Jackson. Because Lamar Jackson run the ball, it's just it just gets out of hand. You can't stop him. So on the last drive of the game, when they're walking down the field trying to get in field goal range, you let Lamar Jackson pull it, and he ran like 30 yards. Like, that, that just can't happen. You cannot let Lamar Jackson 
pull the ball and run, especially in critical moments like this. So I think the Bengals did lose this game more so than the Ravens winning. Okay, I think the Ravens, um, they're in a rough spot in my opinion because they are 3-2. and two, But they could very well be, let me see, a Patriots game and this game. They could be 1-4. One and, one and four. If you think about it, they really could be because of Lamar Jackson not being able to close games. He did close this game at the end, but he used his legs. Let's see you close the game using your arm. That's what I want to see. And even in these past couple games, he didn't close it using either one. So, Lamar, I guess you can say he took a step in the right direction. But those two missed passes and, and just, like I said, not being able to go out there and just close out games is still concerning to me. But he technically did this time with Justin Tucker finishing it off. Really, Justin Tucker, the best closer on the team. And I don't think that should ever happen. I think your quarterback should be the best closer on the team. I, Justin, Justin Tucker, the most valuable player on the Ravens. Honestly, because if I can tell my quarterback, look, you only got to get to this point. Anywhere from the from the 40-yard line, 45-yard line on up. Get anywhere around there, and Justin Tucker will kill it, will end the game. I think that makes it very easy for Lamar, and I think Justin Tucker is the most valuable. Not the best player. Best player on the team is Lamar, but the most valuable is Justin Tucker because nobody has a kicker that, that, that's that accurate, that consistent, and has a leg like he does, and he did in this game. But last but not least, I'm going to do this one quicker than I wanted to the Chiefs and the Raiders. The Chiefs did beat the Raiders 30-29 to on Monday night. Man, this weekend was hard for me. Okay, my Steelers got bashed, got our heads beaten in by the Bills. Then the Raiders came out and lost like this. This Man, this was the worst weekend by far because of how they lost this game. Mahomes, 29-43, 292 yards, four touchdowns. Derek Carr, 19-30, 241 yards, two touchdowns. Both quarterbacks played good on Monday Night Football. This is, this is where the Raiders made me mad. So the Raiders have – every game they lost has been by one possession. That is crazy. That is crazy. Every single game they could have won, but they beat themselves. And this is why. I've told y'all, this Raiders defense is not that great. It's not. They have two pass rushers that can own. That's that's all they have is two pass rushers, honestly. But in this, in, that's what happened at first. So in the beginning, the Raiders went up 17-0. Went up 17-0. And I'm like, man, this is, this is what the Raiders are supposed to do. They was running the ball well. They was throwing the ball well. Defense was getting pressure. Max Crosby and Chandler Jones was getting pressure on Mahomes. That's why they were able to maintain, contain Mahomes. And the turning point happened in the second quarter. They was when the rape when the um, Chiefs was down twenty no seventeen zero. I'm sorry. And they had it was second. Max Crosby got a sack. He sacked Mahomes. Now it's second and seventeen. And Raiders got all the momentum. And the Chiefs had a thirty yard run by Jared McKinnon. He broke like five tackles on that play. Dragged one man for like five yards and kept running. That was the turning point because they then scored on that drive. So that was the turning point of the game, and then the rest is history. They went, end up being down 20-10 at halftime, and then second half, the momentum kept going for the Chiefs. Now, back to what I was saying about the, Ra- the Raiders' defense. The Raiders allowed Travis Kelsey to have seven catches 20 for, for 25 yards and four touchdowns. Seven catches for 25 yards, thinking, man, that's great. That's good defense. Four of those catches came in the red zone, and that's why they, he has four touchdowns. In the red zone, when you're playing the Chiefs or the Ravens, I was talking about the Bengals defense too, there's no way in the world Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews should be wide open. You're supposed to take away their best player, take away their best option, make somebody else beat you. Travis Kelsey scored, four, Travis Kelsey scored every touchdown. That cannot happen. That's why they lost this game because you let Travis Kelsey take over in the red zone. They, he was never double teamed. He was never. They never had like a, a a matchup zone against him. He was running wide open. That cannot happen, especially against the Chiefs. Let Juju beat you. Let Marquez and Valdez Scantlin beat you. Let somebody else beat you. Do not let Travis Kelsey beat you, and he did. Four touchdowns, all in the red zone. That's the bad. That's terrible defense. And on top of that, the Raiders had eleven penalties for ninety nine yards. Gave the Chiefs ninety nine yards. One thing you can't do is give the Chiefs extra yardage that's just one thing you cannot do and then the chiefs right they missed the field goal missed the field goal and it, and it got called back so there's a flag on the play because the raiders had a holding call how rare is that a holding on the field goal block so the raiders beat themselves man and then after they missed that field goal they went and travis kelsey ended up scoring 
I think the Raiders definitely lost this game, and it, and it really came down to, so offensively, I'm sorry, Josh Jacobs had 21 carries, 154 yards. He averaged 7.3 yards a carry and a touchdown. This offense is scary, and it showed y'all. They put up 29 points in this game. Probably should have put up more. Devontae Adams, three catches, 124 yards, and two touchdowns. And this is where everything just went just went down hill, y'all. Whenever the Chiefs, I'm sorry, whenever the uh, Raiders scored, and it was end up being 29 to 30. 29 to 30. The Raiders said we gonna go for two. Josh McDaniels came after the game and said, "Look, I went for two because you're on the road against the Chiefs. Chiefs have momentum. You gotta go in there to take the lead." I I, I see what you say. I hear you, but I don't care. Kick the extra point. Tie the game. It was four minutes and 27 seconds left. Why are you going for two? If it's if it's 27 seconds, just 27 seconds left. Go for two. But when four minutes, dang near five minutes left. Why are you going for two? I don't agree with it. And then, they, and then they ran the ball with Josh Jacobs. So I don't agree with them going for it. But when they did go for it, I agree with the call. Run Josh Jacobs because Josh Jacobs been doing good the whole game. I told y'all he had 154 yards, seven yards of carry. All I need is two yards for a two-point conversion. I'm expecting Josh Jacobs to get in there. Unfortunately, he didn't. He fell short. It went down 30 to 29. Chiefs got the ball back. Chiefs drove down the field a little bit. But then they ended up punting the ball. Now, people saying that if they didn't go for two, right, then they would have won that game. But you can't necessarily say that because if the Raiders kicked the field goal and it went 30 to 30, the Chiefs would have went out there and, and ended up punting the ball, right? The Chiefs would have called different plays because of the situation. So that changed the whole situation of the game. So you can't necessarily say that if they just kicked the extra point, the Chiefs would have then punted it, and then you would have had the ball back and keep the field goal for the win. No, that's not necessarily how that goes because if – the Chiefs, if the game was tied, the Chiefs wouldn't have ended up punting the ball. I don't think. I think it would have been way more aggressive, and they would have went down the field and tried to score versus just trying to protect the ball, which they did. They ended up punting it. The Raiders get the, the Raiders got the ball back. All right, the Raiders on third and one threw the ball to Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams bobbled the ball. He got both feet down, but he bobbled it. Best receiver in the league. You cannot do this. You can't. He bobbled this football, and and it just hurt my soul because if they would have got this catch, the game would have been over. There's a field goal range. They would have won the game, but he bobbles it, cannot get two feet down. Then it's fourth and one. They ran play action in the first quarter. They ran play action on fourth and one, threw a post route to Devontae Adams. Looked like they called the same exact play on this one. Play action did. I think they should have ran it. You should have ran the ball. Josh Jacobs been doing good all game. Should have ran the ball to get one yard, but they didn't. They play action, did, and they came out well. They was in man to man. We had Devontae Adams on the post route, Hunter Renfro on the out route. He was throwing the ball to Devontae, a post route, which he did earlier in the game. But these, oh, these idiots, they ran into each other. Devontae and Hunter Renfro ran into each other, and that's how they ended the game. That's a bad look. Look, I picked this team to go to the Super Bowl, and every week they show me that they are a Super Bowl caliber team. But they just can't finish games. It's somewhere in the game where they make a bad coaching decision or somewhere in the game where Devontae Adams boggles the ball or they run into each other. Like, this is just straight bad luck for me. But I'm sticking with it. One and four, this is the best one and four team of all time, hands down. They can easily turn the season around because of what they have. Like, the Steelers are one and four. Uh, mathematically, we are still alive. But the way we're playing right now, we're not. But the Raiders, mathematically, they're alive because they're only one and four. And it's early in the season. And the way they're playing, they are still alive. The Raiders still have a big chance to make a run into the playoffs. And once they get in the playoffs, hey, it's, it's best best man wins in there. And I think they're one of the best teams in the league because of this offense. Josh Jacobs running the ball good. And then you got a passing game because of that. And that, that like I said, that game just hurt, man. It really did, honestly. I, let me show you this pass real quick by Derek Carr. For those of y'all saying Derek Carr is not good, look at this is the best pass I've seen all year, hands down, no questions asked. Stepped up in the pocket, threw this ball off his left foot. Didn't throw it off the right foot. Threw it off the wrong foot. Threw a dime to Devontae Adams to take the lead. That was clutch. Derek, no, to try and take the lead. I'm sorry because it's 29-30. But, man, that game hurt this weekend. Hurt. I'm ready for next weekend to get this mess out the way. But I went overtime. I did go overtime this game. I mean, this episode. But it was a lot of things I wanted to talk about and talk to y'all about. But I appreciate y'all for listening. And thank y'all for subscribing, man. I really do appreciate y'all. And my next episode is on Friday, of course. Previewing this next week in football. Cannot wait. But look, much love to y'all. Y'all stay safe out there. Keep God first. You can never go wrong. Much love. I'm out.